accounting, Part 19, Stock Dividends, Splits, and Treasury Stock. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. And a site that we use for preparation of some of these lectures, you can find the link right here. We've talked in the past about earnings per share, and there are some situations where earnings per share can change. The basic formula for earnings per share is earnings divided by a common shares outstanding, and we've talked about areas in which the shares outstanding can change. We're going to add on some other changes that can affect earnings per share, stock dividends, stock splits, and treasury stock. As we flip over to Excel, as we flip over to Excel, I'm going to use the same financial statements for the Levi Jeans Company, and this time it's 123109. We have a balance sheet on the left, an income statement on the right. And at the bottom you'll see that we have common shares, 20,000 common shares out, outstanding. We have net income of $7,000. And our basic earnings per share formula is net income less preferred dividends. In this case, we don't have any preferred dividends. So no dividends paid for preferred shares. We divide that amount by shares outstanding. And in this case, it happens to be $7,000 in earnings divided by 20,000 shares gives us earnings per share of 35 cents. And we mentioned in note two here that the shares are a weighted average. That we're going to take the total shares each month and we're going to average them to come up with a weighted average and that will be our denominator. The purpose of this video is to explain how that denominator and earnings per share can change. So we have here a calculation of the weighted average number of shares. And we have some events here in the top left that happen during the year that change the number of shares of the common stock that are outstanding. So we're going to talk about the events in the top left and see how it affects the chart at the bottom part of the page. On February 1st in blue, we issue 10,000 more shares of common stock. So the change in shares is we add 10,000 shares. 20,000 plus 10, we now have 30,000 shares outstanding. So between, for the month of January, and we're making every month 30 days, or 1 12th. Between January and February 1st, we had 20,000 shares outstanding for 1 12th of the year, making the math easy. One month is 1 12th. Then between February and February 1st and March 1st, we issue 10,000 shares. So for that period of time, February 1st to March 1st, we have 30,000 shares outstanding. So that's 1 12th. On March 1st, we issue a 10% stock dividend. So we take the number of shares outstanding right before March 1st. We multiply that by 10%. So we get 10% more shares or 3,000 additional shares. 30,000 plus 3, 33,000 is our new total number of shares outstanding. So from March 1st to May 1st for two months, we have 33,000 shares outstanding. But we've got another issue here. We need to adjust the shares that were outstanding before March 1st. So you can see that for each of the prior periods before March 1st, we're multiplying by 110% or increasing the amount of shares by 10%. It says in the footnote, the shares outstanding prior to March 1st must be adjusted for the stock dividend. The shares are increased by 10% by multiplying by 110% um, or 1.1. On May 1st, we buy 5,000 shares of Treasury stock, which is defined as stock that's already held, that's already issued and outstanding held by the public. We're buying that back. We're removing those shares from the marketplace. So our shares outstanding goes down. We take the 33,000 and we subtract 5. So for this period of time, from May 1st to June 1st, 1 12th, the shares outstanding is 28,000. 
On June 1st, we issue a three for one stock split, which means for every one share, you now have three. So our new total shares outstanding is 28,000 times three. We now have 84,000 shares outstanding for the period of time from June 1st to October 1st. That's four months, counting each month as one twelfth. But just as we did with the stock dividend to even things out, we have to take all the shares that were held before June 1st, and we have to multiply them by three for our weighted average calculation. The last thing that happens is we take 4,000 of the shares of Treasury stock that we bought back and took out of the market, and now we're going to reissue them. So our number of shares increases. The 84,000 plus the 4,000 is 88, and that's for three-twelfths of the year, October, November, and December. We finish up the weighted average calculation by simply multiplying across shares outstanding times fraction of a year. If the stock dividend needs to be applied, we multiply that. If the three-for-one split needs to be applied, we multiply that. And what you'll see in these formulas is that we're just multiplying straight across. The first one happens to be 20,000 times 1 12th times 1.1 times 3. The March 1st one happens to be 33,000 times 2 twelfths times 3. The June 1st happens to be 84,000 times 4 twelfths. So we just multiply straight across and we end up with weighted average shares. <clears throat> here at the bottom, 87,250. In part, the reason the number is so high compared to the early months is it's because those early months are all increased by three for the three-for-one stock dividend. So although the shares outstanding are much lower in the early months, you have to remember that they're multiplied by three. It's not unusual that we end up with a weighted average of 87,250. So if we assume the same net income, which was the $7,000 for this annual year, we're taking $7,000 divided by the $87,250, and we're getting an earnings per share based on the weighted average and all the other activity that occurred up here, we have earnings per share of $0.08 cents per share. So the whole purpose of doing this weighted average share calculation is so that we can have an accurate earnings per share number. And in order to do that, we have to have an accurate calculation of shares outstanding. That's the end of part 19. Here's our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. For small group live chat sessions, the first Saturday of the month, every month we have an inexpensive live chat that you can listen to. We also do one-on-one. -on -one live tutoring using gotomeeting.com on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Here's our website, our email, and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.